how to use the touched event to detect when a player steps on a part in Roblox. So firstly, we're going to insert a part and then we'll just move it over here and we'll insert a script inside of the part. The script doesn't have to go inside of it, but just for simplicity, we'll put it there. So in that case, we will have to reference the part by saying script.parent.part. Sorry, script.parent. So <laughs> just script.parent. Uh, and then we'll say script.parent.touched colon connect function. And this will now fire when something steps on the part or touches it. Now, this could be anything, right? It could be another part that just falls onto the part for some reason. Uh, it could be the spawn. It could be the base plate. It, it literally could be anything. So how do we work out whether this is a player? Well, we know that the, the part that touches this main part here is going to get passed to this event. Okay, so we could call this other parts. You might see it sometimes referred to as hit because it's the thing that hit the part, but you can name it whatever you want, right? But we're just going to call it other part. And this is definitely going to be um, a part, okay? It, this will only fire if another part touches it. It could be a body part of another player, okay? It could be a part inside a model. So we've now got the part. How do we actually detect that this is a player? Well, we know that if it is a player, if it is a body part of a player, let me just show you here. Let me insert a uh, rig into the game. So we have this character here. This is a typical Roblox avatar. And let's imagine that the right hand, okay, this blue right hand is the thing that touches our part. Well, if this is a player, we know that the player has a humanoid in their character. So this is the first thing we could do. We could say, okay, so does the model of that character, if other part or parent, so we've now got the model, if it has a humanoid, then we know it's a player. Or do we? Because this would pass as a player in this case, but this is just an NPC. It's got the same makeup as a player, but it's a static NPC. We're just assuming that this is a real player because it's got a humanoid inside of it. So whilst this is a good way of working out if this is an NPC or if it's a player, it's not the best way. So let me show you another way. And that other way is called get player from character. So there's a built-in function to Roblox which lets us pass a character's model object and if a player exists for that character, it will return it to us. So it will create a variable because it's going to either return the player or it's going to return nil. So we'll just store that as a variable. We're going to say game.players colon get player from character. And as you can see, it says returns the player whose character matches the given instance or nil if one can't be found. So we're going to pass other part dot parent, okay? And then we can say if player then, and by the time we get to here, we know for certain that a player exists and that a player has touched our part. So from here, you can do whatever you like, okay? You can then get their character by saying player dot character. Alternatively, you could say other part parent but since we've got the player we can just say player.character and then you can do whatever you want so if you wanted to kill the player for example you could say character uh, dot head colon destroy and um, because that disconnects the head and kills the player so let's just give this a little test let's click on play here and here we are now I just want to show you look what happens if let's just keep the output window open as well just in case we get any errors but look look what happens when I put already pro onto my part okay I, so there's now an NPC touching my part but nothing's happening the, the NPC hasn't been killed because it is not a real player because the script attempted to do that get player from character check and it returned nil because if you look in the players service 
there's only my player. And this is the distinction between a player and a character, because a player is what is stored in the player's service. However, the character is stored in the workspace. So the get player from character is looking for a player in the player's service, which has the character connected to it. And since this is an NPC, it's not a real player. It has no object in the player's service. However, if I try and step on this part, because I'm a real player, it kills me, okay? And just ignore these errors here. Uh, that's just because it is firing multiple times, okay, when I step on this part. It's firing for every single body part that touches this part, right? It's, it's for my lower legs, my upper legs, my hands might touch it, and it's touching it over and over and over again. But after the first time it's touched, well, the head has already been destroyed, so it's not there anymore. Hence why it is returning an error which says, head is not a valid member of model. But if you wanted to prevent this, you could do something called a debounce. And that essentially lets your function here only execute the code once every couple of seconds to prevent it from spam uh, executing and printing all the time or throwing errors. And to do that, we just create a variable called debounce. We'll set it to false for now. And then in the function, we can simply say, um, in fact, we'll, we'll do it inside our if statement because by that point we know it's an actual player. And we'll say if debounce, then return end. And that just prevents the script from going any further if the debounce value is true. So this condition, if you just say debounce, that just means, okay, if it's true. So after that, we have to set it to be true. And then down here, we can just do a simple task.wait of say three seconds set the debounce to false again. And once that debounce variable turns false, it will it will let us run this code again because the next time the, 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 the brick is touched, the debounce value will be false. So this condition will not run. So the, the function will not return. It will carry on and it will let us kill the player. So let's just head straight back in and try this one more time. I'm gonna step on the brick and you can see it's killed me once, it's executed once, it's not, try to run that code again but since three seconds have now passed it will let me step on it again so that was a brief introduction on how to create a part that you can step on using the touched event in roblox studio and also a brief look into get player from character and also debounces if you found this video useful please leave a like please subscribe let me know any more videos you'd like to see and i'll see you in the next one